Well, morning everybody. I think I've sort of said hello to most people um, so far, but uh, this is just a little bit of a, I'll sort of do this at the beginning of the day because generally people have questions about you know, controls, what does what, and a few little tip bits which just makes life a bit easier when you're, when you're out sailing. Um, so I've just rigged this lovely brand spanking boat here. We're going to use this as a bit of a demonstration. Um, one thing <clears throat> which I just mentioned actually, one of the, this is one of the few classes where you don't have to do or spend an awful lot of time tuning your mast up. You know, there is a tuning guide online. It's very simple. It gives you a mast rake uh, and, and some sort of shroud tensions. That's all really you need to work on with Solo. And you, um, that mast rake is, is 5940 for memory and over hoisted to the, to the flat band and down to the back of the transom. And that is a pretty much an all purpose mast rake. To the point where I, for the last, this is a new boat that I'm sailing today, but for the last three years, <clears throat> I've basically taped the pins in the in the shrouds and the forestay, and I don't even touch them, <clears throat> no matter what the wind condition is. So it's just super simple. That is not the be all and end all of going fast in your solo. So you, you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about the Merlin chat, about the raking rigs and everything. So we can simplify all that. Um, so, you know, your, your stays, your forestay and your shrouds, are you know effectively bend limiters so they stop or reduce the amount of mast bend you have that's all they're there for there's no spreaders to to position mast bend more exotically it is very simple so obviously the tighter you have the shrouds um, you're effectively artificially stiffening the mast uh, and the stiffer the mast you have the, the straighter it is and the fuller the sail will be so that's great if you're uh, heavier or you're sailing in light to medium airs where you're looking for power that conversely these also stop the rig going moving forward at all downwind so you it's a bit of a balancing act uh, and if you have it too tight the boat just simply will, and I've tried it <laughs> the boat just simply doesn't want to go the rig needs a bit of movement a bit of freedom particularly on sea sailing as opposed to you know pond sailing you can probably go a hole tighter on your shrouds but sea sailing you need a bit of the rig to move and work for you um, else it just feels a bit dead so once you've kind of got the mast set up and you and you've got yourself in that position you don't have to worry about it anymore you can now focus on actually just sailing the boat so it's pretty simple um, so we'll put the sail up on this and then we can just talk about the sail controls what you're looking to do sailing the boat upwind traveler main sheet etc etc it's a lot simpler than some people talk about it. Should be just fine this one. <laughs> One thing that's worthwhile while I'm hoisting this up is just having a little mark. They've all got wire racks mostly on your wire halyard. I have normally I'd have two marks. Um, obviously you've got it, you're limited by the top of the headboard level with the bottom of your black band. Um, I have one mark which you know hoisted here it will sit on that on that band and I'll have another mark the next pin up so when it's windy I go to that pin because by the time you pull the Cunningham on hard and you sheet it on pre-start for the first time the wire beds in a bit and it always creeps down so it's just worth to save you looking around going oh and we're nearly up you've just got a mark on the wire rack and you're done then so I'm gonna guess the we're just gonna put it on this one for the minute might be a bit, a bit low, but we can work with that. So, uh, for those of you, um, if some of you have just kind of got into single-handed sailing from two-handed sailing or, or double-handed, um, 
one of the very brief comments I'll make is kind of think as your mainsail as your jib. So forget about all the whole having the boom near the center line and a nice twist. You need the boom out over the quarter like you would be shooting your jib to a side deck uh, and it's the leech of the sail that's kind of going to give you your, all your pointing uh, upwind uh, and, and boat speed. So quite often I see particularly when people jump in the boat for, from other classes or from particularly first time in single handers is they're shooting the boom much too close to the centre line and um, with far too little kicker or main sheet. So just a, an opening gamblet on that one. Um, so once you're sailing, well, what can you adjust? You've got in haul, Cunningham, out haul, kicker, centerboard, main sheet, and traveller. So let's start with main sheet and traveller because that sometimes mystifies people as to what you're doing with it. Um, again, because I'm a simple being, I like to keep things pretty simple. So rule of thumb is, if you are underpowered, then the traveller comes into play. Okay, so when you're underpowered, you're sitting on the side deck, you are, you're not looking to, we discussed earlier about bending the mast, it's flattening the sails. You want to keep the mast as straight as possible. Big, deep, powerful sail upwind. You want as much power as you can to get yourself hiking. So you don't want to touch the kicker. So all that happens when you pull the kicker on is it bends the mast and flattens the sail. So we'll save that for later. So what we want to be doing is using the main sheet to tension the back of the sail, the leech of the sail. And then the traveller is simply positioning the end of the boom in the right place. Because if you have the boom in the middle, if you have the traveller in the middle and pull your main sheet on, the boom's going to be in the middle. And you're basically going to, you might point high, but you'll be dead in the water. So all the traveller is there to, then to do is to keep the boom end out over the gunnel. And as a rough guide, in the conditions where you're using the traveller, like you never want the boom inside of this side tank upwind. You're getting like that is flat water, five knots. You can get away with that. If you do, if the boom's in here in 15 knots, you're having a horror show. So all you're doing is you're using the main sheet then to control your leech. So you want, and this is part of the key part. Um, single handed sailing is the, the leech of the sail, particularly the bottom third. That's what gives you your grunt and your pointing ability. So if you have a really open twisted sail, you're just going to be sailing very low, quite fast, but, but low and generally underpowered. So what I do is in these conditions is the top leech telltale on that top batten. That's my target. If that is stalled, I've got too much main sheet on. So it's gonna, when it's this windy, because we are hiking in this stuff, it pretty much flies all the time. But in the light stuff, where you'd be using this sort of technique, it's very easy for that top telltale to just stall. So that's your guidance of, and it's only, it's subtle, you know, so you can hear the, the, the ratchet click. So it's click, click, click. Right, that's your limit. And it's the last little bit that will give you that last little bit of speed. But if you overdo it, the speed will just crash if you, if you stall that top pattern and the, and the top telltale. So once you've kind of got your, yourself in your ballpark with your main seat tension, given the wind is sort of staying the same, you're then looking to adjust the traveller so you've got your boom out over this side back area. And say in the very lighter conditions, you can get it in towards the inboard end. As the breeze starts to build a little bit, you're gradually moving the track because you're also as the breeze builds a little bit, you do an extra couple of clicks of main sheet, which pulls the boom in again. You want to be dropping the traveller back out so your boom is getting out towards the outside edge of this side deck. Okay. Once you've got to that stage and the breeze is starting to build, starting to build, you're now getting to the point where you, you can't keep the boat flat anymore. That's your overpowered setting. Roughly, roughly, excluding other sail controls for the minute. That is the point where I simply then just ignore the traveller. So, traveller gets cleated in the middle of the boat. Forget about that for the rest of the day. And you're then using the kicker to control 
the power in your sail and the leak to the sail. Because what happens is when you pull the kicker on, uh, it instantly pulls the boom out. So if I pull the kicker on, the boom naturally migrates out to the side deck, which is good. It's also helping defend the mast and flatten the sail, which is good because you've got to that point where you can't keep the boat flat, you're overpowered. So that's the real common thing about is um oh what do you do with a traveler How, you know that, so that is your two sort of stages of sailing the boat upwind and it, and it really is that sort of simple um it doesn't need to be any more complicated so you, and i'm kind of just glazing over the other cell the sort of more finesse type sail controls for the minute um, once you've got onto the stage where you're hiking hard, we'll just focus on the kicker for the time being. You know, so that naturally is pulling the, the sail out to the side deck. It also means there's no load on the main sheet. You know, that's all the load is taken up on the kicker. You're simply, the main sheet is simply having the ability to move the sail, the boom, in and out. So it means that, yes, it's got windier. The waves have got bigger so now you can cheat to adjust for those waves so you get a big set of waves it's very easy just to knock it out of the cleat ease the sheet a couple of inches the boat powers through the waves a bit better come in afterwards you get a flat spot you can sheet in a bit more but it will naturally you know boom angle wise it will, it will sit out here if, in fact when it's very windy you can end up with the boom well outside the gun but we'll kind of come on to that bit so that's your basics of sheeting the sail upwind. There's all the other combinations now. So the other biggest factor, uh, I'm sort of firing this out, I know we're kind of a bit of time pressure, but the biggest other factor that people don't adjust enough when it's windy is the centerboard. And again, we're talking upwind. So um, you've got, on this boat it's got two marks on the centerboard most people have got these marks if you haven't it's really worth worthwhile putting them on so the top mark the highest mark here that becomes level with the top of the case when the leading edge and it's sort of triangular the, the centerboard that's when the leading edge is vertical at the bottom of the boat you hardly ever use that position so it's, that's for super light airs, super flat water, sort of sitting on the traveller while I'm going sailing kind of sailing, you know? <laughs> so, um, because it's various things, but it, obviously it affects the balance of the boat, that board, because it's quite big. So you have it right down in the lighter conditions to try and give you some feel on the rudder. You know, it's nothing worse than saying you've got no feel on the rudder, it's, it's tricky. That's trying to help balance the boat. The next line down is when the trailing edge is vertical so you've now gone slightly swept back and that's kind of your regular light air centerboard setting um, so you're still in the main sheet using the traveler still sat sitting on the side deck and that's kind of your just go to you want to know where you're going around the bottom mark just pull it to that setting and you're in good shape as the breeze builds and you start to use the kicker start to flatten the sail you probably start, you know, feeling that the rudder's starting to load up, you know, the old weather helm, you're starting, the, old, the arms are starting to get a bit tired. And that's the time to lift the centerboard up. Again, it's quite big, so it has a big uh, effect on how the boat is balanced. Um, if at the end of the day, the breeze is built, you know, the waves are built, it's a really worthwhile exercise. And I sort of recommend doing this with all all controls, but going to the extremes because then you can really feel how it affects the boat. So if you go upwind today in, in 15 knots and have your board right down to that top mark, the boat will feel really heavy on the rudder, loaded and slow effectively. It's, it's constantly trying to lift you up into the wind. It's constantly trying to get you higher rather than faster. Pull the board half up, literally half up and then do the same thing and the boat will feel super light and it will just want to go upwind and it's just finding that happy medium between those two points actually you'd be much quicker going upwind in 20 knots with the board half up than fully down 
you know, if you if, if you can err on one side than the <coughs> other, and you just want a binary, you'd be much easier. Boat's much nicer to sail. Um, you know the old saying about how the guys at the front make it look really easy it's because they've made it really easy by flattening the sail pulling the board up it's light on the rudder and just the boat wants to go and, and sail easily so um, what I also have as well as it's worthwhile you know these two marks great um, again I haven't on this boat but I, I usually mark I put three or four marks and then they don't have to be particular distances but say every 25 mil do an extra mark down the back of the board so that you know when it gets windier you know and you're and you're increasing the board it might just be one two three i know it's 20 knots i'm going to go to number three you know the most up upwind centerboard setting um, and at that point you know the this we're down the marks are down here you've got the back of the board will be up around about here showing above the above the case here so Quite a lot more upright <coughs> and I say just you can do that anytime go out and just feel and it's easier when you've got someone next to you if they still you know you go out for club racing just try it what next to each other one of you go half up one of you go fully down and you'll see the differences it's amazing how little leeway you get by raising the board because actually the boat's going a ton faster so everything's working better um, and it just makes it it's a it's an enjoyable thing to do upwind because it just makes the boat nicer. So those are the kind of key factors, if you like, of, of sort of combination of mainsail and, and, and board and getting the boat feeling right. The more subtle parts then are what you do with the in-haul, out-haul and Cunningham. Um, so roughly speaking, the in-haul acts like a sort of miniature Cunningham. So in years gone by, this was either pinned or you'd have a rope strop, fixed strop, which is fine. You know, you just have to, they just, you know, it's one setting. This is just adds a little bit more finesse. So, but again, you can make it pretty simple. Upwind, you want it pulled in towards closer to the back of the mast. And obviously as the, as the windier it gets, the closer you want that into the back of the mast. You can see on the sail, there's sort of a natural gap cutaway. You know that that there fingers width that's neutral you know 10 knots upwind you kind of want it neutral um, all I do around the top mark then is just I let the in haul off out the cleat and that then is about the right depth for most downwind legs you see you can make it super simple um, so yeah so just going back to the in haul basic effects so you steer when you're going upwind you know you when in the lighter stuff you're using that leech telltale at the top to trim to. These are your steering telltales. So this is telling you how close to the wind you can go to. Um, by pulling this in, it effectively drags the shape forward. And it kind of only really in this bottom baton area it affects. It's quite localized, it's quite subtle, but it does make life a bit easier. Um, and particularly when it's rough, you want a more forgiving, you know, sort of lower, faster mode to be when it's windy. You want that in touch of the back of the mast and it just helps pull the shape forward, creates a forgiving sail shape to steer to. Um, kind of in conjunction with that is, is the outhaul. Um, we've got that here. Uh, it, it, and your outhaul position will range from being windy, you know, don't be afraid just to get a crease along the foot like that. Um, to talking about upwind generally here, um, to max power conditions where, you know, as a guide and you can put, you know, you can either put marks on the end of your boom. I've kind of put, a, your max would be, you know, we're talking rough figures, that sort of distance at, the, at your main sheet point where you're looking at the sail between the middle of the boom and the, and the bottom of the sail cloth, not the white section. That's the sort of biggest depth you'd really want. Um, you can have a bit deeper than that. When you're really kind of looking for power, that's six to eight knots sitting on the side, almost in the toe straps kind of condition. Um, and again, for any given condition, you get to the top mark, let the in-haul off, and that's 
your guideline footsteps down. Um, and then final control, Cunningham. Cunningham makes a big difference on these sails because The big difference between laminate sails and Dacron sails is how much or how little they stretch. So when you pull on the controls, they kind of stay on, um, which is good in one way because it's not going to stretch. It's bad another way because if you pull it on when you don't need to be pulling on, it's going to stay like that. <laughs> uh, they won't sort of auto tune for you, but um, it's it's powerful enough that it will bend the mast. So you can same sort of thing. It compresses the mast, flattens the sail and it basically opens the top of the sail, flattens and opens the top of the sail which makes life easier when you're overpowered. Just be careful on the Cunningham because you can overdo it um, upwind and if you, if you overdo it you'll struggle to point um, because you can, you can pull it on hard, the sail will completely twist open and you haven't got any kind of leech tension to be able to pull the boat. So it's quite, you know, you don't, you don't need to be too hard, however if you're at the light end of the scale, it's 20 knots. 20 knots and you want to um, depower, absolutely just, you know, I know a colleague of mine, Tom Gillard, he's a lot lighter than I am. He has an extra purchase in his Cunningham and literally puts his foot against the gunnel and pulls it on as hard as he can, till his eyes bleed. Um, so there's, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's there, but if you pull it on really hard and you're wondering why you can't point, given everything else, just be aware you might have overdone it. Um, and just sail longevity wise, sometimes I see people, you know, they've gone upwind pre start, they pull the cunningham on hard and they go around the bare, bare way, go back to the sail start line, or they've gone around the top mark and they've still got the cunningham on. Obviously, when you're going upwind, you've got the kicker on tight and the mast is bent and you've got, you're pulling the cunningham on. That's all well and good, but then when you let everything off to go downwind, the Cunningham is the only bit trying to hold your mast bent. So, sort of like, oh, you know, <laughs> just let it let it off. <laughs> um, so just, you know, just knock it out the last tack before the top mark or whatever. Just knock it out the cleat, and it will make your sail look a lot nicer for a lot longer. Um, Tony, can you just run through the sequence of depowering? Which controls do you pull on first, and which ones do you leave to the end? Yeah. So. Um, so the first stage, once you've gone into that kicker control um, and, and main sheet, that's your first stage. And it's, it's kind of incremental from there. So we talked about having your max power with the, out, with the foot of the sail. You know, that's when you're just getting your toes in the toe strap. As you start to get hiking harder and harder, you know, you're starting to pull the outhaul on and, and the inhaul, they sort of come in conjunction to flatten the foot of the sail out. So that's, a, you generally go flatter along the foot before you start pulling the cunningham on. Um, and as you're doing that, it's not sort of, um, it's not a case of right, we go flatten the foot first of all, and then the next stage is board up. It's a little bit stage by stage. So you've got stage one is flatten the foot a bit, board up a little bit. Okay, it's starting to breeze again. You know, now you have a, maybe a little bit more kicker. Once you've got the kicker on, that's kind of, you can overdo it. Um, and just quickly on that, you know, and a way of overdoing it is um, when you're sailing, you kind of end up with like an overbend crease, so kind of halfway up the mast, down to the bottom band. If, if you really overdo it, the bottom batten will kind of invert. That's a sign of you've got too much kicker on. Um, that's the only thing really you can overdo. It's really, you know, really kind of negative. Um, so then it's just a case of gradually, you know, let's go a bit more on the outboard, let's have a bit more board up, um, starting to sneak the cunningham on. It's just a sort of a gradual process, really. Um, another thing useful, someone mentioned about tacking. So when you've got to this, this point, you know, your boom is quite low. You've got your kick on, the boom's down here. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge to tack, so you know, I have to let the kicker off before the tack. That's just one of those things. Um, what's quite useful is I tend, what I usually do on my boats is I have a little mark on the, on the coarser tune of your kicker that when I know when that double block or however you cascade lines up with, 
I know I can get under the boom. Um, other people have got like a bit of elastic that runs along here, attached to that block. So that, and a mark so they know that when that block's eased enough and the elastic pulls the line along to that mark they can get under the boom um, I know that for my max kicker you know if I go like that an armful that's enough for me to get under the boom but it's sometimes worth um, just having that in your mind you know so if you you know if you come into top mark and there's loads of boats and you're on port and you're potentially tacking or ducking you know remember that the kick is going to be the bit that catches on the life jacket and, <laughs> and gets you on the uh, on the club we'll moving for the uh, <laughs> for the day so um <coughs> so that's worth of that <coughs> um what else oh downwind centerboard position <sighs> yeah i mean i um you can obviously if it's flat water and it's very light you can have the board a long way up but the problem is that it becomes a bit of a soap dish and all that energy the boat's sort of skidding around so you want enough board down that that skidding around is is not happening and that energy is promoted into making the boat go forward rather than from side to side like a soap dish um, to the point where I know people want to go downwind in the waves today you need more board down it's about half down ish and I'll try and have a look at that so that you've got directional stability so people talk about steering on the waves you can't steer on the waves aggressively without enough board on because you just simply scoot out and you miss your moment so um, I'll try and as we go around I'll try and have a little yeah get up a bit more or put it down a bit more today um, and same thing on like I said we'll, we'll talk about that in the briefing in a second but what I can try and do any brief questions kind of on that slingshot of information before we go out? And, and the rudder you need to adjust the pull. Make sure, make sure you've got your pin in the, in the pin tools and the rudder's down and hard and pleated. Just downwind kick attention. Particularly reaching, it's a really easy way of making the boat feel dead is by having too much kicker on. And there's a, so whenever I do these days, the rules of thumb are upwind, people don't have enough kicker on. Downwind, they have too much on. So um, bigger ranges between your kicker tensions. And I'll, I can, I'll bet my hat that I'll come round to half the fleet and probably go, you need more kicker on upwind. And then downwind, I'll say, you've got too much on. So um, one of the reasons downwind is because, uh, and, and we'll talk about reaching, for example, you, you need, you need the top of the sail to sort of pant and work. If it's just solid, it's just not really working for you. And, and yes, you know, you're to talk about, you know, your downwind trim normally is going on the top mark is instantly how I'd not normally sail in, well, in, in every wind condition is two to one. So from the block on the boom and take it from the front block is what I normally do. Um, and that's, a great way of keeping the feel and how much wind you, you know, how much pressure the sail has got in the lighter conditions, uh, and also giving it, you know, enough movement so you when you want to pump downwind in the stronger conditions, you've got enough range to do it. Um, if you can't do that, you know, it's windy and it's too strong, that's fine, you just go through the block as well. But particularly in the light conditions, uh, it's a really nice way of feeling. You're like, oh, I'm a bit slow, well. I've hardly got any pressure in the sail, I'm gonna I'm gonna head up a bit. You know, I'm gonna head up a bit, get a bit more pressure in the sail. And that whole chat about, you know, people call it what you like, but you know, just sailing the the angles downwind, it's all about pressure. And you can only really feel that when you when you're taking the sheet straight from the boom. So and it's on all angles, whether it's reaching or whether it's running. Um just running, you know, people just don't sail dead downwind. If you're sailing dead downwind, you're literally just being blown along by the wind. So that's why people say sail the angles, because then you get, if you're above dead downwind, either on a broad reach, you know, then you've got flow across the sail. So instead of the wind just, if you're dead downwind, the wind's just hitting the sail and it's just trying to go around the edge. You know, it's not effective. If you get a little bit higher, there's flow from 
luff to leach and conversely if you go by the lee you've got flow from leach to luff and people say it gets tippy when it's by the lee it's not it's tippy when you're dead downwind so you've got to commit to go another 10 degrees further because it's tippy because the sail the energy is getting to the wind and then going oh shit i don't know whether they go to left or the right that's the tippy bit downwind so then you've got to make sure you either head up 10 degrees or 15 degrees 30 degrees or by the lee and once you commit like you can sit like that all day it's, it's pretty stable um, it's that bit in the middle that's the, the sketchy bit so um and by having that feel on the sheet you can feel and you know the light airs yeah i've got some pressure now i'm gonna bear away i oh, know it's starting to feel soft i'm gonna come up again so that's the sort of basics of what we'll we'll kind of go through this afternoon uh which kind of leads us on to what we're going to do today really um ultimately this is kind of you guys trying to get as much as possible um i'm just here to try and help out so let's go and have a nice sail it's a nice day sun's out um we'll sort of focus on going upwind starters and there's quite probably you know it's going to be a reasonable range of, of skill sets i'll try and come round and so we'll set up a rabbit start so hopefully everyone saw the the link on how we do a rabbit start what i suggest is um so when you're setting up it's like setting up for a start line if you like you know give yourselves particularly as we start off this exercise don't get any closer than two or three boat lengths to the boat to lure of you else you're just going to struggle with you're going to fall into them when you get spat out of the run very quickly okay so give yourself some range and if we've got 10 boats or whatever you know it will be it'll be a reasonable length of time but just give yourselves an option to to be able to sail for a few minutes unaffected from the boats um so uh one of the reasons I'm wearing this ridiculous coloured top is so that you can sort of recognise who I am. So hopefully if I come around and go, oh, try this, you're like, who's this bloke? You know, um, or you can choose to ignore me, it's absolutely fine. But um, <laughs> So we'll set ourselves at going upwind and um, what I might do is the first rabbit run, I will be the rabbit. So we'll set up on starboard. If you can just get yourselves in, in a vague line, I'll come across on port, like a gate boat, like a gate start. You duck behind me, sheet on, and we all go on upwind. That means I'll get to the right, to the windward of everybody, so I can sort of see what's going on, rather than having to you know, do my neck in. And, I could, and at that point, I might just reach down and come behind you and sort of shout you a little bit, any comments I can sort of see. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, we'll do, we'll do maybe three or four minutes, uh, and we'll stop. By that stage, someone will have either got ahead or got behind. And the boat that's lured of that lineup on starboard or whichever tack then sails off to be the rabbit for the next one. You understand? So we'll just keep doing that. So the boat to lured naturally just bears off, goes off a bit of distance, taps. When you're the rabbit, um, don't just sort of sail off 20 feet and tack. <laughs> sail off 100 yards almost and tack. So the people and sit there on starboard until you kind of see that everyone's lined up a bit you know don't just go sail charge off tack and then wonder why no one's straight after you equally we can be there all day if, if one guy's not getting it so we kind of have to be a little bit speedy just to kind of keep the process but by by sailing off that sort of 100 yards that lure boat people naturally you know i've got a whistle so I'll try, if i do multiple whistles it'll be right let's stop the run we're going to go into it we're going to restart um, so the boat by sailing off to leeward tacking will naturally give people the space and as soon as he's tacked and sheeted on <clears throat> then the next you know the boat who is now the first through the gate can reach down and get get it started you know and it, it will naturally spread people out a little bit okay so hopefully i've kind of explained that in a way that's legible um are we allowed to tackle the port? I, ideally, the idea is you kind of do this as a bit of a tuning run rather than a race. Okay. So the idea is to everyone to keep as close as possible rather than tacking out like you would in a race. Okay. We'll, we'll do some tuning runs on port if we can, just to even it up. But um, the idea is that so I can kind of get some visuals of people going just upwind to, to yeah, yeah, exactly, just, you know, as much as ever. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a few runs of that, we'll get upwind. Hopefully I'll have got round 
if there's something really obvious, I'll come and find you and say, right, try this for the next for the next run. Um, and we'll make our way upwind. When we get to coming downwind, the best way to sort of start is, is effectively a, like a follow me leader. So I'll go on a beam reach. Pretty obvious, hopefully, if it's not too chilly, I have got this on. I'll wave my hat, blow my whistle. And if you just line up behind me until we've got a bit of a train of solos. And again, if I lead, then I've got, as we bear it, I'll blow my whistle, everyone bears away onto, we'll start going dead downwind, so we'll go onto a run. I've then got, looking at everybody again, if we're on starboard, I can see everybody in front of me and I can see what, if I can help anywhere. Um, and we'll just do that as, as much as we can. We'll do some, try and do some reaching as well. Um, and if you've got questions, like we'll have a breather for a couple of minutes while we're out there, have a drink, come and find me, ask a question, you know. Um, that's pretty much us, I think. So if we, should we launch and sort of meet by the starting platform-ish area? Is that a good place to kind of gather or, what would you, suggest? you know? Meet by Y, I would have thought. Meet by Black and Orange. Black and Orange, Black and Orange yeah. to the right of the channel as you go out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, before the end of the post. Okay. Um, yeah, if we... Mm -hmm. It's on the opposite side from the start of the okay. uh, we'll, oh. Where the solos congregating, I'll come and join you. Right. 